Yes, so up next is uh, Niels Stamhuis. Um, Niels has a background in uh, integrated product design, am I right? From Delft? Yes. Um, and he now started his own company called Dent, and you're a Rotterdam based startup that focuses on um, making IoT accessible for all kind of companies. Um, I hope it's going to work with the slides. I think so. Full screen. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. Can I use yeah. this or this? Is Both. this okay? Yes. I'll try to... Uh, usually my voice is already quite, quite loud, so I hope this uh, amplifier works. <laughs> Um, yeah, so hi, thanks for the introduction. My name is Niels Stammhuis and uh, indeed two years ago I founded a uh, company called Dent. And Dent uh, uh, creates uh, uh, Internet of Things uh, uh, products for, uh, to help companies apply digital innovation. I'm here today uh, to talk about Marvin and the uh, developer board we created that we use as a tool to uh, offer uh, companies uh, access to uh, the technology that Internet of Things has to offer. Um, but to explain you uh, why we made this, how we made this, and uh, how this came to be, I would like to take, uh, uh, take you uh, uh, back a few steps. Let's see if this also works. It works. Awesome. Um, apologies about the euro in the top. If anyone knows, maybe F10 will work or not. That's a Mac. I do Windows. Sorry. Um, anyways. Uh, we're based in RDM Rotterdam, which is not far from here. It's uh, uh, 10 minutes with a boat outside of the city center of Rotterdam. And RDM stands, uh, stands for uh, the Rotterdam, uh, Rotterdam Dry Dock uh, Company. It's the old Rotterdam Dry Dock Company. So they used to build ships here. It's a very beautiful place where um, we are part of the RDM makerspace, or we are grown out of the RDM makerspace. And makerspace is basically a place where um, there's, uh, um, uh, it's a gym concept uh, for people who want to make something. So it's a workplace with, uh, uh, that allows people access to uh, machines uh, that all uh, focus around uh, uh, digital manufacturing. So a machine that is, is computer controlled and you can use it to take your digital model to a physical object. And starting the makerspace back in 2013, it grew into a, a community of makers that try to apply innovation on a daily basis. So uh, think about robotic arms, CNC mills, uh, robotic arms that do metal uh, welding. For the maritime industry, you might have seen this in the news, this actually got certified. It's like a full-on uh, bronze uh, propeller for a, a ship that got certified even. Um, and we have machine equipment to uh, produce electronics. Uh, it's a pick and place machine where we can do small series. And uh, to give you a sort of an overview, because there's many, many things happening, um, what we really try to do is to, um, uh, to look at uh, technical innovations or techno uh, technological uh, developments and make them accessible for the market. So uh, if you think about uh, artificial intelligence, if you think about blockchain, if you think about machine vision software, internet of things, data warehousing, all these kind of amazing technologies that can offer so many great things for the, uh, the companies now or the companies of the future, we really try to, uh, in a playful and accessible way, uh, uh, introduce them to companies in workshops mainly to take them from uh, why is this relevant, what would you do with this, and how could you start applying this for yourself. So my company focuses mainly on the Internet of Things and together, uh, RD Makespace founded together with KPN, the Internet of Things Academy, where we yeah, basically had a very uh, unique chance to almost meet every uh, corporate company in the Netherlands, ranging from PostNL to Albert Heijn to uh, installation groups to architect, uh, uh, agricultural uh, companies. Um, really a delight uh, to hear so many things about how companies work, how they apply things, how they do things and look with a fresh uh, pair of eyes to how could things go better? How could we do things smarter by applying technology? Um, so yeah, what we often see is that we start with data and if data is all right, which is often not the case, it would surprise you how many times you would find people walking around with a pen, a sheet of paper and a pen, writing things down of doing things uh, in a smarter way. Um, the next step, if you, what we always explain is that if you don't have the, your, uh, the data you're looking for to give you uh, the insights that you need to work smarter, you can always start using Internet of Things to 
apply sensors in your operations and get more data out of the world. Uh, and then those, uh, the data will give you then the insights to uh, work more efficient and save cost ultimately, or give you a new business model or give you access to a new customer base. So how to get started? Uh, that was something we found was pretty hard. So we were trying to explain companies what are sensors, what are uh, uh, platforms that you can use uh, to, to, to think about ideas that, uh, or to really um, uh, validate if your idea is a good idea. Uh, that's, so it's a little bit of the stolen from the, or applied from the lean startup method, uh, uh, fail fast and fail often, um, try to start going right away. You can have <coughs> great many things, but only the moment you start to try uh, and build and apply it, you will learn whether it actually works or not. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, that's why we invented Marvin. And Marvin is a developer board that uh, allows uh, plug and play interfacing with, uh, with sensors and the LoRa network. Um, LoRa is a great communication protocol, just like Wi-Fi or mobile 4G or Bluetooth. It offers uh, internet communication, uh, but then super energy efficient. So it allows you to create products that can last five to 10 years and are uh, uh, relatively cheap. Um, so what we try to do is to make it really yeah, plug and play. So the idea with this board is that even though you're, uh, you don't have a technical background, um, so if you're a salesperson or you're more from the, from the business side of things, not necessarily technical, electrical, or software background, you would still be able to, to think of something you would like to measure, uh, uh, combine it, plug it together, and then uh, start testing. So it's really a, a tool, basically, that, uh, that allows you to uh, uh, plug something together, go out into the field, use a regular power bank that you would uh, use to charge your phone when your battery died uh, for the second time this day, and uh, then use that same power bank to plug up your, your board and, and test and generate data and then learn. That's really uh, what the thought behind it. We put it in the market with a, a Kickstarter campaign, which was a lot of fun, but mostly for ourselves an exercise to see what is Kickstarter, how does it work. It's a lot of work. Um, I, uh, we made our goal on the first day, which was 10K, um, and we made it up the way, all the way up to 23K. Uh, uh, but uh, in the end, um, uh, we spent way more on the whole production of a batch of 1,000, and now they're still in stock at uh, Conrad, which is nice, but there's still too, way too much stock after two years. So it's uh, a lot of learnings. Ask me about this in uh, three minutes. So I wanted to show you a little bit about how, how, did, how we went about this. So um, we really did uh, classic industrial design, so to say. So we made prototypes. The original idea was to uh, make it as a hardware on top for a Raspberry Pi Zero. Who of you does not know what a Raspberry Pi is? Everybody knows what the Raspberry Pi is, nice. Uh, so uh, yeah, so the, the Pi Zero is a $5 computer, so we wanted to make it as a, as a hat for that, but then in the end we, we thought, okay, it's very energy hungry. If you want to make something low power, why not just use Arduino, uh, uh, the Arduino platform as a main, uh, uh, as a main uh, brain, and then we developed into the, the board all the way up to the right. So yeah, then you start doing hardware design, which you never learned in your studies. So you find people who can, and then you start collaborating. And then uh, we did the first pick and placing ourselves, the first 250 boards. No, that's not true. The, the, the first uh, uh, 50 boards were made like this, pick and placing it yourself, very small SMD components. Then we had a small uh, uh, Chinese uh, pick and place machine that worked with an Excel uh, sheet, it was, was a lot of fun. Uh, we made many, many boards. Uh, <laughs> and uh, iterated and learned a lot. But uh, in the end, really, to, yeah, to create this tool that allows us to, uh, um, to offer people a way to interface with technology in, a, in an understandable and accessible way. So a little bit about the board. What we did is that <coughs> we chose to work with Grove sensors. It's a, it's a standard we didn't invent ourselves, but it's a sensor you can buy on the internet. It's relatively uh, affordable, so for companies, this is a really great way to start testing if IoT is something for them, yes or no. They don't need to invest anything, they just spend a hundred bucks on something and then they have the answer whether or not IoT is applicable for them. And of course, we are convinced that we can always apply IoT, but then it's better to let people find these things out themselves than to uh, uh, try to convince them. Um, so what we did, uh, it's very, uh, it's Arduino based, so there's a lot of open source documentation available. We went, went one step further, so not only creating a hookup guide and combining uh, information in a readable way, 
But going one step further, we created an online application where you can um, uh, configure your board in an, uh, uh, with a user interface. So there's drop-down menus where you can select which sensor is on which uh, port. This application downloads the Arduino code ready made for you, already configured on the KPN LoRa network, so you're just ready to go. You upload it to your board and uh, after two minutes it will start sending data. And you can then collect that in a dashboard that belongs as a second application to the first application. And this is just a plug and play experience for people to, yeah, to, to get going fast. Um, just as fast as I need to finish my talk. Um, so just an example of how we applied this ourselves. So we use it as a tool for ourselves mainly. Um, we did a case to uh, help companies work smarter in maintenance by uh, taking away the need for routine inspection, by making an asset in the field smart, letting the asset tell my door is open, yes or no. Um, uh, you need to uh, visit me, yes or no. And this is something that came from a Marvin in a workshop we developed into a product and that went almost like this. So really iteratively, again, lean startup. Um, so that's about Marvin. Thanks for your attention. I hope you have any questions. <laughs>